very lovely, please. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ken and Books, Inc. Uh, I, um, you know, I tell people about this tour that I'm going on. We have 40 some events. And they say, oh my God, this and you can be so exhausted, but I love it. I mean, I really enjoy getting out and talking to people and having the kind of, you know, uh, conversations that have been arising at some of these uh, events already. So I'm going to read just for a few minutes, for five or six minutes, uh, uh, the prologue from the book, and then we can go into questions and answers. And am I okay on the microphone? Okay, let's see. You're tall. <laughs> Make love to the mic. Oh, there we go. I wanted to do that to Cleve once, but I never got very far. Uh, um, I, there are so many people in this room I could go around thanking literally Steve and Carol right here and Rink whose photography I've enjoyed for years and years and Angus and Thomas and Mark and Tez and I can go over here and Jen and Lauren who is our managing editor at, at Paz the, the reason we never missed a deadline in terms of delivering the the magazine uh, 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 despite our sometimes dysfunctional uh, is uh, Lauren Hoffman right here. My cousin Manjula, who worked at Paz, who dropped out of college. I always kind of thought to come work for Paz, basically. <laughs> um, and all sorts of other people. So, uh, and my pal Naomi, who's uh, 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 just an amazing pal. So, um, uh, I, uh, a lot of what I have said at some of these other events, I don't think I need to say here because I think people understand the epidemic. Uh, people in this room in a, in, um, uh, in a way that um, different from some of the other places I've spoken. So I think I'm just going to do the prologue and read that, and then we can get into a, a discussion. It requires glasses. <coughs> December 1989, New York City. I am nervously sitting in a pew near the front of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York, where John Cardinal O'Connor is about to celebrate Mass. It has been years since I attended a Catholic Mass, and even longer since I took communion, the holiest of sacraments, but that is why I am here. Looking up at the cathedral's soaring nave, I remember the awe I felt as an altar boy at St. Mary's in Iowa City, and later, the anger when the church betrayed me. It is bitterly cold, a near record low, Many parishioners wear heavy coats as they hold hymnals in gloved hands. Slush-covered boots have left a wet trail down the long center aisle. There's a puddle under my pew. The mood in the church is tense, nothing at all like the droning boredom of the masses of my youth. As the minutes pass, I think of the Jesuits, who taught me as a child that a good Catholic acts upon the church's social teachings, even if that means confronting the church. My hands are trembling with the cold my apprehension and other feelings too deep to name. Outside St. Patrick's, 4,500 angry men and women have assembled, packing Fifth Avenue and chanting and waving placards that read, curb your dogma, papal bull, and condoms, not coffins. Fists pump the air, bullhorns blare. Act up, the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power is protesting O'Connor's assault on safe sex and reproductive rights. There is an almost carnival-like spirit to the demonstration, with ACT UP affinity groups, such as Church Ladies for Choice, the Hail Marys, and Speaking in Tongues, performing their protests. In ACT UP, high camp and high seriousness are uniquely compatible. An artist named Ray Navarro, <coughs> an artist named Ray Navarro is dressed as Jesus Christ, swathed in a white shroud, carrying a large wooden cross over his near skeletal shoulder. His bearded face is gaunt, and he wears a crown of thorns over his long, thinning hair. Despite the cold, Ray looks beatific. He will be dead in less than a year. Keith Herring is there too, in a knitted cap with a long hand-knitted scarf wrapped around his slender neck. He has two months left. Inside the cathedral, O'Connor's mass is interrupted again and again by ACT UP protesters. Surreptitiously spread throughout the church, they stand up and yell out their statements. My friend Michael Petrellis climbs on a pew and shouts, O'Connor, you're killing us. Another friend, Jamie Leo, dressed as a priest near the front of the church and offers up a prayer in protest. Two boyfriends in black leather motorcycle jackets handcuff themselves to one pew. 
Right after O'Connor begins his homily, 30 protesters stage a die-in, blowing whistles, throwing hundreds of condoms in the air and going limp in the center aisle. The cops, two long lines of blue on either side of the cathedral, have their moment, binding wrists with plastic handcuffs and carrying the protesters away on stretchers as if they were taking them to a hospital rather than to paddy wagons. With this homily in tatters, O'Connor retreats from the altar to his throne-like chair. He sits with his head in his hands, melodramatically trying to convey spiritual pain. <laughs> Photographs of the media-savvy cardinal looking tragically besieged will elicit overwhelming sympathy when they appear on the front pages of Monday's newspapers. Communion begins amid the general confusion. Act Up protesters line up, interspersed among the regular parishioners, but when it is their turn, they make loud political pronouncements. Safe sex is moral sex. I support a woman's right to choose. Condoms save lives. Soon, it is my turn to receive the body and blood of Christ. A small, dark-skinned priest is serving my cue. His white, green, and gold vestments are oversized and bright. He hesitates briefly, his eyes fixed on the pink triangle and silence equals death logo visible on the t-shirt underneath my coat. Then he holds the host in the air and intones with a strong Spanish accent, the body of Christ. This is the moment, my moment, to confront the church when instead of repeating the body of Christ as expected, I am to make my political statement, but I have not prepared one. When I rehearse this moment in my mind, I imagined I might when I rehearse this moment in my mind, I imagined I might break into tears or erupt in rage because no slogan, in fact no words at all, seemed adequate. May the Lord bless the man I love who died a year ago this week, I hear myself say. My voice begins as a tremble but finishes strong. Police standing a few feet away are ready to intervene, watching to see how the priest reacts. His hand jerks slightly, but he looks me in the eye and gives me the wafer. With my heart pounding, I walk back to my pew. My mind is fixed on bodies, but not the body of Christ. I think of Michael's body and the agonizing brain infection that turned his last days into a kind of crucifixion. I think of the bodies of the protesters carried out on stretchers and the bodies of those chanting outside, many struggling to survive. I think of my own body, wondering how much longer it will last. Parishioners are staring at me, their faces disgusted or sympathetic or just plain stunned. Some have their heads bowed, hands pressed tightly in prayer, like the devout at St. Mary's, their faith unshakable and unwilling to brook any criticism of the church. They might be praying for us. After Mass, I pass through the cathedral's heavy doors into the bright sunlight, and it seems to me into the arms of my true community. I am exultant in a state that feels like grace, certain that if I am to die of AIDS, I will die as a fighter, not a victim. I'd like to read that part of the book, um, uh, partly because it was by far the most controversial action ACT UP ever undertook. It was um, uh, wildly controversial, even within the organization, with very intense debates all summer long. At, at times, it looked like it might actually tear the group apart. Um, and by 10 o'clock Monday morning, Gay Men's Health Crisis, American Foundation for AIDS Research, Everybody had their press releases out condemning us, distancing themselves from what we were doing. Uh, we were very much alone. Um, but there are a couple of things I like to point out now with the perspective of almost a quarter century. It'll be a 25th anniversary this December of that action. Uh, the first is there were 110 people arrested that day, roughly half inside the church and half were outside the church. And of those arrested inside the church, if you look at the roster of names, something becomes immediately evident because those names are pr preponderance of names that are clearly culturally Catholic. They are Irish names, they are Italian names, they are Polish names.